What's up everybody, Sam Smyers here. Today I wanna to go over the differences between a cover song, a remix, and also using samples in your songs. Now there are key differences between all three of these things, so I wanna go over them to make sure you're not going to be doing anything illegal for your next release. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. So go ahead and give this video a like, and then also if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe to stay updated with future content that's gonna be just like this. So I first want to mention that there are two different types of copyrights in every song that is released. There's going to be a copyright in the sound recording, and there's going to be a copyright in the actual composition or the musical work. So understanding that there are two different copyrights will help us for the rest of this video. A cover song is essentially a new performance of a previously recorded song by someone other than the original artist. And basically anybody can make and release a cover song without having to obtain permission for it. Since it is a new performance and you are creating a new sound recording, you can actually keep those royalties for that sound recording. And you just have to pay a mechanical royalty to the original songwriters and publishers of that original song. So that mechanical royalty is paid to the songwriters or publishers of the original song each time that a song is downloaded or streamed. So that rate is currently 9.1 cents per download or for streaming, that's going to vary depending on the streaming service, but it's going to average about six cents per 100 streams. Most streaming platforms like Spotify or Apple Music will take care of paying this mechanical royalty to the songwriters and the publishers. So if you are just uploading a cover song to streaming platforms, then you won't have to do anything else additional. Usually when you are uploading your song to your distribution service, there is an option to select whether your song is original or it is a cover song. So for example, if I go to somewhere like DistroKid, I can go to this upload page here and I can scroll down on this upload page and then I can select where it has this option for songwriter. I wrote this song or another artist wrote it. So if I hit another artist wrote it, then we have this whole option that comes down where I can select the original artist and the original song title. If you are going to be selling physical copies of your song or selling your song for downloads, then you will have to get a license from the Harry Fox agency. So in this menu here, there is a little box that explains that DistroKid will actually secure this license from Harry Fox automatically whenever you are filling this out. And this is the fee. They charge a fee of $1 per month to do this for you. If you are using another distributor that does not do this automatically for you, then you can actually just go to the Harry Fox Agency website and do that by yourself. So you can go to this website here. This is going to be Harry Fox Agency. I can hit license music and then, or learn more. And it will take me to this website called Songfile. And this is where you can sign up. You can search for the original song that you're covering and enter in the details. And what it will ask you is how many downloads you estimate that you'll get or how many copies you estimate you will sell. And then you'll pay a license fee depending on the amount of downloads or copies that you estimated. And once you do that and you pay for this license, it'll give you a digital copy of a license and a distribution service other than DistroKid might ask you for that license. And you'll just have to upload that license to the distribution service as you're creating your new release. It's important to note that for a cover song, the lyrics and the melody have to stay the same. When you start changing the melody and the lyrics, then you will have to obtain permission from the original artist. Also in a cover song, you can't use any other sound recordings from that original recording. So you wouldn't be able to use the vocal file from that original recording, or you wouldn't be able to take like a guitar stem from that original recording and put it into your new recording. Your cover song that has to use all original sounds to be a cover song and not something like a remix. So now let's get into how you would release a remix. A remix actually does use stems from the original song. So most commonly it'll use an acapella stem and then the producer or DJ or you will basically build your own production around that vocal stem. Or you might have all of the instrumental stems and the vocal stems and then you can build a remix using pieces of all of those stems. In order to legally release a remix, you do have to get permission from both the copyright owners of the sound recording and the composition. A lot of times this will just be getting permission from the artist. If you do not obtain permission from the copyright owners or the original artist and you do release a remix, then this is going to be considered a bootleg remix because it's not an official remix. Usually you would not be able to upload a bootleg remix to distribution services like Spotify or Apple because the artist will just have it taken down or the label will just have it taken down. But a lot of times you can have these things uploaded to YouTube or SoundCloud 
or use and make these bootleg remixes to perform in your DJ set. And doing bootleg remixes is actually a good way for DJs to showcase their skills, their production skills. So I wouldn't discourage you from making bootleg remixes. Just know that if you do want to upload it to Spotify or, or Apple Music, then you do need to get permission from the artist. Oftentimes when you see official remixes on Spotify, it's because the artist or the label themselves have secured that remix. If you do end up getting an official remix, then you will have to sign some type of agreement. And in that agreement, you might be able to get a payment, like an upfront fee, or you might be able to get some type of royalties off of the master recording. But you probably wouldn't get any publishing or songwriting royalties because those would stay with the artist or the original songwriters or publishers. So now let's move on to how you would use samples in your work. When you are using a sample, that is going to be a sound recording. And so within that sound recording, of course, you have both of those copyrights. You have the copyright of the sound recording and also the copyright in the musical work or the composition. And when you are using that sample in your new work, that is called a derivative work. So now because in a sample, you have both of those copyrights, you have to get permission from both the sound recording copyright owners and also the composition copyright owners. There are a lot of horror stories of hip hop artists or DJs using a sample in one of their songs and then they didn't clear it. So what happens is your song gets really popular and successful and then they end up getting into some type of dispute with the copyright owners and end up having to give away all of their royalties to the original copyright owners. So if you are planning to use a sample in your song, just make sure that sample is cleared and in order to clear that sample, you may be able to get away with paying the copyright owners a flat fee to use the sample, or you might have to negotiate some type of fee plus royalty, so a royalty on the master recording and also a royalty on the publishing or songwriting. So clearing samples is a major headache for artists and also record labels. So just make sure that you clear your samples before you actually release your song. If you don't know who owns the sample or who the songwriters are, let me show you a few resources. We could go to BMI.com and we can actually search this song view here. And so I could go and enter, let's say the performer is Kanye West and hit search, hit accept. And let's say the song I'm using is all of the lights. So let's go ahead and hit all of the lights here. And now it tells me all of the publishers and the writers and composers, performers, so if I wanted to use a sample from all of the lights, then I would have to get clearance from all of these publishers. So you can see that that is why getting clearance on a sample can cause major headaches because you have to get approval from all of these people here. You could also go to ASCAP and do the same thing. Hit the repertory search here on ASCAP and search for the title or the performer and you might be able to find the song in ASCAP or BMI. So these are both of the major performing right organizations in the United States. So most likely, if you are using a song from a performer that is in the United States, you'll be able to find their information in either of these two websites. One thing you can do with sampling is if you are able to obtain the rights from the songwriters and publishers, but you can't obtain the rights from the owners of the sound recording, you could actually just remake the sound recording to try to replicate how it sounds. And that's known as an interpolation. And you hear that pretty commonly today where you basically hear something that sounds similar to an old song, but it's not actually the old song. It's a completely new remake of that old song. And that's called an interpolation. So that might be an option when you are having trouble clearing the sample with the owners of the sound recording. So I hope that helps you understand the differences between a cover song, a remix, and also using samples in your songs. If you do have any other questions, please comment down below and I'll respond to them and help you out. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give a like and also please consider subscribing to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And finally, if you are truly looking to improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. This is a full online mixing course that I created that will help you make some of the best records of your life from the comfort of your own home. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.